Yeah. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Uh, I've got a white screen. That's what I've got. Oh, can you check if uh, stuff is on Twitch? I mean, I can send it to, to you to it on YouTube as well. Whichever one you want to use. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you could use the YouTube one if you want. Some guy named Mo is the, uh, the username. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Interesting. Uh, Discord. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. And we're good. We're going. Allison? Sorry, nobody can hear you. Ah, oh, look at that body. The ice truck killer. God damn it. What a way to start the new year. At this rate, I'll be dead by Easter. Quiet down, Agent Jones. You're on the clock. Quiet down? Ha! <laughs> you, you have any idea what you've done? I'd be half naked in Havana right now if you hadn't shown up. Soaking up some rays, surrounded by a harem of bikini queens, a mojito in one hand, and a seafood slathered Havana style pizza in the other. What did I do to deserve this? Does God hate me? No. The regional bureau chief merely issued a special order. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh. 
What is yeah. this character? How man? could I forget? Oh, I'm not a even special order to rob me of my well-deserved vacation. I'm just you want pizza? I'll buy you some pizza. Room. You can find that junk anywhere. Whoa! Hey! Hold on a minute. What did you just say? Pizza is not junk. That's insane. Agent Jones, don't let him take control of the conversation. Oops. Why don't you let your guard... Just stare at his, his face for a moment longer, won't you? So for a moment. I said a moment. Down, he'll strike. And no red, remember? No red? What is this? It's open. Come on in. Oh, Francis York Morgan. He's just like, come on in. No. No. <laughs> I think my boy did it to himself. <laughs> ah, so this is peak York Morgan. You have questions for us. <clears throat> That's why you're here, isn't it? Francis Zach Morgan. Ooh. I cannot even choose to move the character left or right. I can only move to the places I'm supposed to move to. I'm literally holding the sticks in the wrong direction, and it's forcing me to go in that direction. The game is strong arming me. Mr. Morgan, before we question you, allow me to first read you your rights. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. Please right keep that in mind as you speak. <laughs> Ooh. Do we have permission to film this? This is so this is so weird. <laughs> hmm. Don't worry, my fairy. They're free to do whatever they like. Something wrong, Mr. Morgan? <clears throat> I'm FBI Special Agent Aaliyah Davis, and this is... Simon Jones, an analyst from the Boston branch. He's been monitoring us for years now. Oh, uh, hi. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, uh, hi. A southern belle and a lonesome loser who can't catch a break. 
Quite the uncanny duo. You'd be the perfect stars for the latest video game. <laughs> Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> How many years has it been since someone came to chat with us? Oh, but... Don't ask me about my fairy. That's a private matter. It's hard to tell what he's thinking, but my eyes can't be deceived. If he's hiding something, it'll come out in his face. Hey, Belle. Why are you dressed so handsomely? What are you talking about? The thick black accessory wrapped around your neck. That's a male necktie. <laughs> the color black represents confidence and interest in the self. And your decision to wear a male tie symbolizes your declaration of war against a predominantly male society. Or perhaps it's a psychological barrier meant to hide the weakness that dwells deep within your psyche. It's truly there. We admire your bravery. I thought you retired from profiling. <laughs> Bullseye, huh? You're an easy one to read. In order to think with society, a man must first gouge out his eyes and cut off his ears. Don't judge a book by its cover. For someone who's supposed to have been one of our best, you've got an awful eye for people. Or did all that smoke and kill all your little gray cells? Okay, Aaliyah, that's enough. She's smart, but she's also more of a shrew than she lets on. Agent Jones, that's sexual harassment. <laughs> so, Belle, does that barrier of yours also protect you from violent criminals? <laughs> He's more dangerous than I thought. I can't read him. I'll just have to assault him head on with questions then. First, I'll try using the files on the table to shake him up. Mr. Morgan, may I ask you a question purely out of curiosity? If it makes you uncomfortable, just let me know. And I'll retract it. Bell, what's wrong? You sure put a lot of... It's a question about death. About this body? Are you afraid of... Think carefully about why we're smoking this, then ask it. honestly, we're not afraid. Rather, we find it intriguing. <laughs> intriguing? Yes. <sighs> Belle, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon in winter? No. In the dead of winter, the Grand Canyon is terribly cold. Colder than you could imagine. A cold that no photograph could ever express. The sun. <laughs> Powerless. And the temperature drops below zero right in the middle of the day. Meaning? <laughs> you can't really understand something until you experience it for yourself. If you want to learn more about us, you need to gain more experience, Bell. Uh, 
That chessboard looks rather old. And you can't even buy those ivory pieces any- Right. They were banned by the Sites Treaty. That was made in France in the 1900s. We know it's in bad taste. But the weight of the ivory just feels so good in our hands. You play chess alone? Is that a crime? No. But it's a hard game to enjoy when you're all by yourself. He's probably just replicating famous games. Or trying to solve problems from a chess workbook. Right, Morgan? I may not look it, but I'm actually a bit of a chess nut myself. When I was in school, I used to pore over every issue of Chess Life, the magazine published by the U.S. Chess Federation. Well, unfortunately, your guess is completely wrong, Agent Jones. He isn't replicating a famous game, nor is he solving workbook problems. There isn't a single chess book to be found in this apartment. And I didn't find any chess-related websites in his internet history. He was simply playing chess. All alone. So, what's wrong with that, Belle? I don't understand it. How could a single human being seriously play as both? You just publicly confessed to stealing personal data. Seems like that's a much... Oh, no. Everything was done in a perfect... We simply happened to intercept a handful of data being sent out from an unknown origin. Ooh, now she's really trying to scare us. Did you hear that, my fairy? Serious nightmare fuel. These files are from the case that took place just outside of New Orleans in 2005. The agent who handled the case was Francis Zack Morgan. And now he's sitting right in front of me. Do you remember the homicides that took place in Lucare, Louisiana in 2005? We... solved that case. Your report states the following. By coincidence, you encountered a serious incident in a town you visited while on vacation. You then decided to steal the right to investigate from the local law enforcement and took over the case. After several more homicides, you managed to apprehend the perpetrator. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's it. We stole the right to investigate from them. It all started when the body of a 16-year-old girl was discovered. You arrived in Lucare immediately after that, didn't you? We just can't seem to keep ourselves away from dead girls. Uh... Did you really visit that town just to take a vacation? We don't know. If you already have the report, then we suggest you read it, Belle. Either way, that case is closed. Closed? You sure about that? Don't you think this puzzle is still missing some crucial pieces? <laughs> Come on. They found Lise Clarkson's body. It was hidden deep within the Clarkson Food Delivery Service's cold storage warehouse. After 14 years, we finally discovered the body of the very first victim. Do you know what this means? That's why we're here. The first victim in the case he solved, Lise Clarkson. And this is a photograph of what she looks like now. How will he react when he sees it? We're pleased that her body turned up. 
deeply. You claim to have closed this case, but now a lost body suddenly surfaced. Aren't you curious about the details? Body or not, we already solved that case. Lisa's body can't change anything now. And it certainly has nothing to do with us. I suspect the body was stored there rather than abandoned, due to the unnatural state it was found in. She was found frozen in a storage unit. Therefore, she looks exactly the same as she did when she disappeared. In fact, she's in such good condition that we can even determine the murder weapon and cause of death. Well, good for you. Even stranger is how unbelievably beautiful she looks. At first glance, few would guess she was a murder victim at all. She looks more like a piece of art, or a mythological figure from a painting. This keeps getting better and better. Better and better? Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> a corpse as beautiful as a goddess. Sounds just like our story. <laughs> That went okay. Now I'm sure that Morgan's hiding something. I may be able to get what I want if we go deeper into the documents. Who is it? This my fairy character you keep speaking to. You can't see her. Such bad manners. You barge into our apartment, yet you don't even care about who else is living here. Dissociative Identity Disorder. In the past, it was known as Multiple Personality Disorder. You were subjected to an internal probe only once during your career, correct? They suspected that you had DID, but you denied it. And no problems arose during your test. Is this how you dealt with the psychological profiler back then, too? Saying strange things, weaving unrelated matters together, is that how you slipped through? You're free to draw your own conclusions, Belle. But my fairy clearly exists. She's been sitting right there on your lap this entire time. <laughs> hey, stop it. No violence allowed in here, Belle. Wouldn't want to scare my fairy, now would we? <clears throat> You may be wondering why we decided to unearth all these- Everything happens for a reason. The mo but there wasn't much we could actually investigate, due to the damage caused by the hurricane. Then we assume you also questioned everyone who worked in the warehouse. Of course. We question all the Clarkson Food Delivery Services employees who staff the warehouse and its owner, but we still have yet to obtain any key testimonies. Par for the course with a 14-year-old case, if you ask me. Hmm. Not to mention how bad the timing was. Most of the employees were on vacation. So, you gave up on the investigation and came to see us instead. <laughs> Remember what happened, my fairy? That warehouse, that man, so incoherent, such a pain. Hey, are you talking about the guy who managed the vault where Lisa's body was found? Yeah, I think he started working there in 2005. Remember, Aaliyah? You said he was a painted. man, yes? Ah, the large man. Hmm. No need to answer. I'm sure you've already put him under surveillance. Textbook FBI protocol. Isn't there someone else you should have talked to? before coming to us. We were unable to reach Patricia Clarkson. 
You look surprised. I thought you already knew. After all, you visited Louisiana last week. We assumed you met with her during your time there. We haven't been to Louisiana. Not in 14 years. Is that so? We've been right here in our apartment this entire time. That man is our witness, aren't you, Simon? <laughs> He's right. He didn't even take a single step outside on Christmas Eve, which means that I didn't get to either. Are you positive about that? I took the liberty of checking some airline records. Last Friday, the name Billy Bishop was listed on a morning flight out of Boston. This is the fake name you used to use as an agent, isn't it? <laughs> a mere coincidence. Yet that's not all. That evening on the same day, a man with a large scar on his forehead allegedly purchased an 89 Cadillac from a small used car lot in Lucare. He reportedly said he wanted something old, big, and strong. The owner of the car lot felt it was a strange order, so it stuck in his mind. Our world is filled with mysteries, and they always have the most bizarre timing. Incidentally, on the following day, an identical Cadillac was taken to a scrapyard in Trenton. You can find that type of car anywhere. Isn't that right, my fairy? <laughs> Morgan's right. Even this messy room, especially when it comes to those strangely tidy spots. A stinking indulgence and a massive DVD collection. You must live a very comfortable life. We're retired, remember? Retired in your 40s. I'm envious. But who doesn't love movies, Belle? Yeah. I'm not a fan. Oh, that won't do. You should dedicate all the free time you have to watching movies. It's practically an unwritten law. Films guide us. Films are filled with every important life lesson there is. Is that so? For example, They Live. 1988, directed by John Carpenter. That film taught us a valuable lesson. Always put on your sunglasses before a fight. You know, you got a point. What? Movies teach us about everything we need to know. I learned about the right way to eat frozen pizza from Cobra. It's one of Stallone's best films. Before that, I wouldn't be caught dead trying to eat frozen pizza. I thought it wasn't fit for human consumption. No, it's not. <laughs> but that film changed my life. Simon, that has nothing to do with the film. <laughs> You're just talking about pizza. Do you like fresh vegetable juice? Why would you... Th There's a juicer in your sink that hasn't been washed yet. And do I smell the faint fragrance of baked beans? Oh, no. No. You didn't use much salt, did you? Don't tell me he tried to juice his beans. What are you implying? Oh, no. You just told me that you find impending death to be that confused me. When I look around your room, all I can see are the many ways in which you're resisting death. Poly MVA treatment, highly concentrated vitamin C IVs, fresh vegetable juice, vegetable protein without salt. Gallons of vitamin D milk for fat and calcium. We shouldn't leave that out. <laughs> the ambivalent. What? Two contradictory emotions. Mixing. Coexisting. An adult, mature mind. 
is never satisfied with only one response. It's common sense. <laughs> Mr. Morgan, I found several spots in this room that look strangely clean. Did you tidy up a bit because you knew we were coming? Those are... sanctuaries. They've existed from the start. Sanctuaries? That's right. Sacred places. Hovels for pure souls. Were there originally objects in those hovels? Something you didn't want us to see? The souls... We haven't touched a thing, but we know you can't see anything. Hey, Simon, don't touch the sanctuary. That's... <coughs> That's a sanctuary. Don't ever touch it again. You've been watching us for four and a half years, and you couldn't even figure that much out. Uh, my bad. It's my first time actually. You're earning far more than you deserve then. What were you doing all day in that black suburban? We thought wiretapping was your specialty. Don't tell me. Crossword puzzles. What do you think, my fairy? Four and a half years. All that time. And what does he have to show for it? Crossword puzzles? No way. Come on. I thought you knew. I'm a Sudoku guy. Agent Jones. Oh, right. He's completely taken control of the conversation. At this rate, we'll never get anywhere. I need to press him some more. Agent Jones, did you find the files? Nope. You're mistaken. Mr. Morgan, do you recognize these files? Whoa! Ow! We told you. That's a sanctuary. Let him go! Assaulting an FBI agent is an obstruction we told of you. justice. We told you. Go. Ah! Stay back! Stay back! Sanctuary! Die! Stay back! Ah! 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 Yeah. Mr. Morgan? Cut my finger with that can opener this morning. I thought I stopped the bleeding, but it seeped through. How could I be so stupid? Everything should be fine now. I'm sorry for being so careless. I made sure to read through your file and learn about your condition. The color red, such an unusual thing to fear. Please, accept my deepest apologies. <clears throat> I don't know what I was thinking. I'll never touch... and no more red, either. <laughs> don't... ever touch one... again. I... Now. <sighs> Strangely enough, this man has a... and I believe that fear is connected to the Greenbell case. Mr. Morgan, I'd like to ask you some questions about this case now. We don't. I'm sorry, but there's no way around this. I remember hearing about this case on the news when I was still a student. A high school girl named Anna Graham was murdered and the FBI stepped in to take over the case. I also remember it becoming a sprawled investigation due to evidence found in the victim's throat. Is that correct? After that case, you went on sick leave for two years. And when you returned, you requested to be switched over to desk work. What happened? That's a private matter. None of your business, Bill. Were you traumat- Hmm. It's a common problem with prolific agents such as yourself. But there's another possibility that may make more sense. 
Perhaps you simply finished making preparations. Uh oh. What are you getting at? Thinking too much about something will always turn it into a problem. The Greenvale case. Don't you think it resembles the Luke Carre case? Read the report. We have nothing else to say. I just need one more push. One more thing that can summon up the past. The silver clock in that trash pile. That's right. John, after many years, he completed it and presented it to the Board of Longitude. In order to end their feud with him. That's only a replica, of course. You like clocks? Clocks are amazing. Prime fruit of the human race's intellect. We took the invisible idea of time and manifested it in these. Yeah, I love clocks too. Absolutely fascinating. I disagree. Oh? Time is valuable precisely because it can't be seen. Yet nowadays people can't tell what time it is unless it's measured in numbers. Talk about idiocy. I don't mean to side with the Board of Longitude, but remember, humans used to cross oceans with the stars alone. We have our eyes to read moon charts and study the sky. We don't need clocks. What if it's cloudy or storming? All you need is courage, and a love for adventure. <laughs> Hear that, my fairy? Courage, and a love for adventure? <laughs> Come on, Belle. Surely you know how many lives have been claimed by your pals, courage and adventure. <clears throat> hey, hold on a second here. Board of Longitude thing. What the heck is that? I mean, I've heard of it before. I'm an FBI analyst, remember? I just sort of can't... I'm telling the truth. Come on, Aaliyah, back me up here. I don't even care about the honeycomb in the jar. Mr. Morgan, please look at this. What did this we dialogue just is so say? Long. We don't want to remember. This isn't a look closely at it. Former Special Agent Francis Zack Morgan. This photograph predates Greenvale. It's from the Lucare case you worked on in 2005. Red, red, red tree. Yes, a red tree. Greenvale wasn't the first place you saw one of these. The Greenvale case and the lease, they're connected by these red trees, aren't they? Red trees. Both places growing. Roots. Seeds. Answer me. What are these trees? Oh, God. Red I trees. I want the truth. Tell me everything you know. <laughs> the red trees. You really did your homework. Well done, Belle. You're good. Damn good. Good. Mm. Are you? I want to know what went down in Lucare in 2005. <sighs> Fine. We'll tell you. We'll tell you what happened in that town. Yes. It was that red tree red tree ruined my life. It was. It was.
was a sultry summer day. The sun comes down hard on you in the south, like a torrential downpour of demonic whispers. It all started back in that sweltering summer. We still had our best friend with us back then. The other me. <laughs> My better half. Are you kidding me? That was just the intro? God. Never rejoice when somebody needs you. You can't turn away. You're their only lifeline. Just a hero. A bullet for hire. Working alone. a voice, a cry in the darkness, an echo of pain, that's been long forgotten, but it haunts me, my destiny, to be alone. Zack. Oh. It's not just an hour ago. Okay. Is that York? Zack. York? Can you hear me, Zack? Answer, I'm trying. Hi. There you are, Zach. <laughs> Sleeping again? Well, rise and shine. What is happening? Give me a prompt. Isn't that Moving right? Forward. Zach? Yeah, but then he just stops talking. I'm forced to watch his leaves. Uh, dude, I wish. I would love to. I'd love to touch some grass, but uh, I'm waiting for this book to end. Zack, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Ah, uh, York, you're too good for us. 
Look at that, Zack. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Lacare. Sounds like French to me, but what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. Did you hear that, Zack? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Nope. Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zack. Zack? Uh, please don't ask me about Zack. It's a private matter. If you say so, <laughs> still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What you reckon, mister? Zach, he's definitely a professional, but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. <laughs> Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice, if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. Well, shoot. I ain't the one you ought to be asking, Mr. FBI. I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. The sensitivity for this is so high. I'm literally I'm I'm literally not even holding the button and it's just going all the way down. I think I know that Right. Uh what do we do? You said the victim was a sixteen year old. Well show. Sure. I reckon the whole town did. Meaning? She's Lee Clarkson. The little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seat. They own most of the land around here. From the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say. But I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best get clear. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe or nothing. 
things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Is the local law enforcement investigating the case? <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondocks here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss you off. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. Live and let die in the Pelican Brief, right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me, they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat People. That's 1982, directed by Paul Schrader. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder. Period. You need to remember this because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you- Hey, mister, like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. <sighs> well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge? An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Voodoo? Nah, wasn't nothing like that. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. So she was sacrificed. That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. Oh, thank God, no more time for By that. the way, Mr. FBI, how'd you get all the way? Don't tell me you won't. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you with the FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket, your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an F. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Oh. Another mode? Want to hear the deep? Not really, but I'll... Then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot... So, I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? 
Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we've finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Fly. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Hey. He's a man who can see into the future now. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining Fuck the parking my life. lots of Silicon Valley. He's right. I can see it now. It's the world of the last Starfighter. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic it CG, really but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself, especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No so, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? <laughs> Sorry, I got off. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car, I remembered exactly where I parked it. Right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, in short, someone stole it. And in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so oh, surprised? God. No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. By the time I hit the three mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the ten mile mark, I'd ten even learned mark? to do a few ten tricks. Miles? It was a journey of self discovery. Jesus. Not even I knew I had this latent <laughs> talent sleeping <laughs> inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. Watch out, you don't go get heat stroke. Elise Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it. Zack. The searing light. Mmm, these scents. It... It's the deep stuff. Mm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. What would a morning be without coffee? <laughs> that was a fabulous breakfast. Wait, you didn't take a single bite. Oh wow, I can finally move. Where's my skate? bump into people there and she moves now Oh, yeah. I can't just punch people. <laughs> wow, there goes that. No, oh, it's like 200 
hundred bucks. I punched him a couple times, so I got my money's worth, I'd say. Son Rouge. We're chasing it all over America. But I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zack? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but this hole's from the shootout in Tucson. Ah, Miami. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two, even with the help of the drugs. A feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor as blood. I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And Lise Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered, her body was found beneath a bridge over along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially controls the town of Lucare, and he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cin an experimental oh setting, Nick's it was art house. That director's going to cheat. Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard. Just this is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that... Yes, this single movie may be respond... A genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of uh, that. Don't you, Zach? I've watched the island too, and the word part is not that kind of movie. Definitely did not reinvent the genre. Hey there, Chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. I just heard from our chef that you oh wish my to be behind our town's <laughs> lake. <laughs> yes, I've <laughs> gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. <laughs> All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. That's it? Yes, that's it, sir. Do you take a gander at the town map in the lobby of this fancy wheel? It's beautiful, valuable, and old. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zack? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. <laughs> All right.
right, boys, I think that's all I can do tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go enjoy...